So um, my name is Jonathan Worth, and I'm a photographer. This is, uh, I wonder if you could bear with me, this is part pitch, part ignite talk, and part question about whether I can do this with an open class. Can I ask you if you're over the age of 12 to put your hands in the air now, or just one, your non-tweeting hand, and can I ask you to keep it there? Oh, thank you. So I'm a photographer, and I try to be what Fred Richin describes as a useful photographer. And for me, that means uh, not making any more pictures. It means, uh, in fact, there's plenty out there. In fact, it means um, enabling other people to speak clearly with the images um, and enabling them to be heard. And since 2009, I've been trying to do this but through my uh, undergraduate class, which we opened out in 2009. And within three weeks, we had, uh, within 30 weeks, sorry, we had about over 35,000 people who'd come. Um, last year, with the help of the DML team, we, we, took, we unhitched that class from the university and we took it out and uh, we, we deployed it in libraries and community centers and it was delivered by librarians and community leaders. Keep one hand in the air, same one, Alan. And so, <laughs> so this time last year as well, I, uh, I showed this picture. And it was a very frustrating picture because it, it shows immigrants on a beach. Uh, they're at, they've got their phones in the air. They're trying to pick up a free, Wi-Fi, a free phone signal sorry, so they can tell their uh, friends and relatives where they are. They're about to jump in a boat. Uh, and we worked with the World Press Photography Award, that's like the Pulitzer Prize for photography, uh, to turn their uh, Academy of Eight a year into a learning network of 11 million. It took a photographer from New York to go to that beach to make that photograph. It should have been them making the image, participating in their own representation. The problem persists. Uh, naively, I might, you know, it's a year later, and since I showed you that picture, 6,000 people didn't make it out of the water when they, got, when they got into it from that beach. Keep your hands in the air if you possibly can. So my job as a photographer is to help people to not look at the numbers and instead see names. It's to see, to empathize with the people that are, that are behind these stories so that they can feel better about moving to action to increase their sort of civic engagement. So this is the picture for this year. This was made on Tuesday this week. This is Eli and Lauren. Um, so. <coughs> Uh, Eli has a uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, <coughs> and his, uh, uh, his mum, uh, sorry, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is an incurable disease. It's 100% uh, it's fatal. Um, his mum, Emily, reached out to me as Phone Our Nation and asked me if I could get photographers to tell the story of these young boys. It's the big, biggest genetic killer of, of, young, of children in the world. It's predominantly uh, young boys. 350,000 families currently are suffering with it. So I said, well, <laughs> Photographers aren't necessarily the best people to tell, to tell, to tell stories, right? Um, and if you think about it, maybe everyone's a photographer. And what happens if we think about that? What about if we take, a, say, a, a socially inclusive photographic moment and point out how it's socially exclusive for our people, like the selfie? And she says, Jonathan, they can't do selfies. They can't lift a toothbrush, most of them, let alone a camera. And so I said, well, that's the point. They're going to get their carer to make the picture. They're going to participate actively in their own representation, though, because they're going to say, well, if you hold the camera up there, I'm going to look weaker than if you hold it here. And if you have the light there, I'm going to look scary. But if you have the light there, then I'm going to look like a rock star. And what's this context that's behind me? What's that saying about me? Essentially, what we're talking about is taking a class out of the course that we took out of the university and deploying it in this pre-existing network so that it goes straight to the people who most need that information so they can actually act on it. Now, you may want to show your solidarity for these young people, um, and you may want to make this uh, link for Duchenne uh, symbol when you make a selfless, which is what we're going to call it, a selfless, not a selfie. And there is a company out there, we're sure, or a consortium of companies that will donate a pound, a dollar, a euro, or a penny for every selfless that's made. Now, these young boys, they predominantly are boys, as I say, are going are gonna to annotate their photographs with a wish that they'd like. I wish I could put my hand up when the teacher asks a question. Or I wish I could take my dog for a walk. So you may want to go a step further, and you may want to make a selfless pledge, whereby you say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a sponsored hand raising. Or I'm going, to take, uh, I'm going to go to the local pound, I'm going to take a, a dog out and walk this dog for William or for Ben. <coughs> I've lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm sure, what's the next picture? Keep your hands up, please. So, <laughs> uh, so um, you, you know, if you're anything like me, what I was, yes, the reason I was sort of losing that is because my hand's getting very tired. And if you're managing to keep your hand up in the air right now, it's probably going numb. It's going to start shaking. You're going to reach the point pretty quick where no matter what you do, you can't keep your hand in the air. Apparently, that's what it's like for a 12-year-old 
with Duchenne's. Um, by 15, most are paralyzed in wheelchairs. By 21, most are on a ventilator, and most won't um, reach 25. But if you, are, if you are a teacher and you have a class and you'd like to help me to tell their stories, then please reach out to me after, after this talk. Yeah.